Today on Auditory Precision, I would like to go over directional microphones, kind of how they work, and um, definitely what is happening when we utilize a locator. So the first thing that we'll go over is just manual directional microphone forward. Now, it's not just as simplistic as pointing it forward, almost like a pizza shape, and it just kind of tries to track down speech. What we're going to be utilizing is different polar plots, which are different cardioid shapes that are going to try to find where speech is clean. And it's going to try to nullify noise and uh, just background babble. <clears throat> and so there's a lot of names for them. We have just the regular cardioid, rear cardioid, bipolar, um, and we'll go over some of the simplistic ones or I should say the most common ones. And so let's first talk about what happens when we put a directional microphone forward. Well, I want my technology and amplification to work in the front, and I don't want to amplify things in the back. And so <clears throat> what we have here is my cardioid trying to pick up things in the front. Okay, it's in blue. <clears throat> Now, what I have here is 180 degrees, 0 degrees, negative 90, and positive 90. Okay, so I'm pressing forward. Everything in the blue is what I want to hear. So how do I nullify the signal that's coming from behind? Well, <clears throat> it's not just as simplistic as shutting off the back microphone. What I will have, however, is a back microphone and a front microphone. And I need that or I can't have a directional microphone. And so what I need to do is figure out the distance between the two microphones. And on an average, it's usually 8.5 millimeters. Okay? So now what happens is I have this unwanted noise that's coming up from behind. And say that unwanted noise is traveling at a speed of 34 milliseconds. I need to figure out how long is it going to take for it to... Um, enter my back microphone and then how long will it take to then enter my front microphone and after doing the equation at 8.5 millimeters with the speed of sound coming at 340 milliseconds to basically cross over here to be about 25 microseconds now what I'm going to do here is the uh, hearing aid is going to create an electric delay of the time that it would take to cross over both. So it will delay it 25 microseconds, which will equal zero, nullifying the signal that's coming from behind. So even though I'm not amplifying this sound that's coming from behind, it's still there and patients can still hear it. So that's something that we need to counsel with. But what I will be doing is amplifying what is in front of me. Now what's coming in front of me um, is going to be having some characteristics of a high pass filter. Now this is just something that the front microphone tends to do. And what this is, is basically if I was at 4K, 2K, and 1K, and I had 75 decibels coming in at 4K, every time I would go down an octave, I would knock off about six decibels. So then I would go to 69 and then 63. Uh, basically allowing highs to pass more freely than lows. If this becomes problematic, you can always just increase your low frequencies or enable a low pass filter, but it is something that the front microphone tends to just do. Now, Say I have 66 decibels that is in front of me. I want to hear this 66 decibels. I'm looking at this person, and that's what they're talking about. We're about an out at an average conversation um, amplitude. So what will happen is even though it is open and it's going out towards 90 degrees, you can see here that as my polar plot comes towards 90 degrees, it starts to come in. I have a bigger distance here than here. And so what will happen here at 90 degrees is there will be a diminishment of sound, and it will be about 6 decibels. That's the average that 
sound coming at 90 degrees when the front microphone is on, it gets diminished by. So that means at 66 decibels in the front, if I'm still hearing that same amount of volume at 90 degrees, I'll only be hearing it at uh, 60 decibels. Okay, so let's start talking about uh, a locator mic. Um, this gets a little bit more complex. Now what we're talking about with pushing the microphone forward, if somebody has a controller where I wanna push it behind, we're just gonna flip everything that we just went over. If I'm gonna push it over uh, to the left or over to the right, we really are kind of just playing with volume at that point because it's going to be uh, extremely hard to utilize our mathematical formula because anything at 90 degrees will hit the microphones at the same time. So now we're gonna get into a locator mic. Um, what we've talked about is just utilizing the front microphone. If we were just manually gonna point it behind, it's the same thing just flipped around Left to right is really more of just a volume situation because we wouldn't be able to utilize our mathematical formula because sound coming in at 90 degrees would touch both mics at the same time. But when dealing with a locator mic, this is kind of uh, how it takes place and I find it really neat. So what's going to take place here is I'm going to figure out that Sound is coming from in front and sound is coming from behind. And the sound that I'm hearing is very clean speech. And so what I want to do is I want to utilize my cardioid shape. And my rear cardioid shape is also picking up really clean noise. So what will happen is, is when I'm utilizing this and utilizing my rear cardioid, I'm going to just turn this into a totally different shape. And the reason is, is that where it crosses over. So when we can't utilize the mathematical formula, what will happen is, is where does my cardioid and rear cardioid cross? And they cross right at 90 degrees. And so what this does is that at 90 degrees, I'm only hearing noise or babble. It is not the clear noise that is creating the polar plots to want to use the front and back mic. And so say 30 degrees of noise is coming in on that side, I'm going to subtract 30 and I'm going to subtract 30 from this side. And so now what will happen is what I will be left here is with a very wide bipolar cordioid. I'm going to be listening to sound that's coming from behind and sound that's coming from the front. And because of where they intersected, I'm going to be nullifying noise and babble that was taking place on the sides here and only listening to speech that I found in the front and in the back. So now just to show a different shape, what's gonna happen here is a little bit of the same, the babble and noise is just gonna be coming from a different direction. So once again, I have some really clean speech coming in the front, so I want to use my cardioid. And I have some um, clean speech coming from behind, so my rear cardioid. But where I'm hearing babble and noise is no longer at 90. And how I know that is because where do the two polar plots that I want to utilize intersect? Well, what happens in this situation is they intersect at about 110 here and here. So now all of the babble or noise that I'm hearing, whether it's 30 decibels or 50 decibels, I'm going to subtract that from this area and do the same on the other side, nullifying the signal that will take place. Now what you'll notice here is because of where it was located, I'm going to be left with a different shape. Instead of utilizing my large bipolar cardioid shape. This is called a hyper, hypercardioid shape. And I'm getting more clean sound in the front with clean sound in the back, but not as much. And what I'm picking up at 110 degrees was just noise or babble. So when we're dealing with things where I can't utilize my 
mathematical formula, I'm just going to have to cancel out where the uh, polar plots intersect. So at 90, again, it coming in, it would touch both microphones at the same time. At 110, it still won't be able to cross over. However, at about 120, I would still be able to cross over the mics to be able to nullify sound utilizing my 25 microsecond delay to take away the signal there. So when we're utilizing a local uh, locator mic and when we're utilizing automatic hearing aids, I'm going to be changing the shape depending on where my polar plots intersect and where they intersect of that being babble and noise. I'll be able to erase it from each side to give me the shape that will enhance speech the best. And then I can use that tactic, but I can also use the mathematical tactic when I'm able to verify how long it's going to take for sound to travel from my back mic to my front mic and get to use this mathematical formula. So by utilizing two, it will be able to localize where speech is coming from and be more optimal to the patient.